to our department, um, another candidate for the assistant professor position in algebra. Um, Peter uh, is from uh, uh, Seoul, Korea, where he was um, uh, received his master's degree from Seoul National. Um, went to the University of Toronto and received his PhD in mathematics. His advisor was Henry Kim, our, our former colleague here. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Um, he's now a, um, a postdoctoral associate at SUNY Buffalo, and previously he was a postdoctoral associate at the Fields Institute. And so um, he's here today to talk to us about the zeros of all the things. Now first, I would like to thank the department and the Dutch committee for giving me a chance to give a colloquium talk. So today, I will talk about two objects. One is a zero to bear function. And the other object is eigenvalues of matrix. So they are seemingly unrelated, right? But they are uh, really related. So I hope ef after this talk, you may have some idea how they are related. Mm. So L function is loved by many number theorists. So to begin, uh, I want to give you some friendly definition of L functions. So L function uh, has two requirements. <laughs> Are you, we have this definition many times. So first, it is given by the Hewlett switch on the right hand plane. And it has all the products. So all the product is a version of the prime factorization for number uh, for L functions. And we want our L function has analytic right continuation to one complex plane, possibly except for S equals one. And also it has a functional equation. So to define functional equation, we need to complete our L function first. So uh, with some positive integer n, here n, n is so called the conductor, and with gamma function, you can complete a function. So this complete f function is lambda. The functional equation is, so equation relating is lambda s and lambda 1 minus s. And here, the epsilon appearing in functional equation, we call this root number. So let me uh, go over some examples. The first example is the most famous one. Uh, what is it? Riemann zeta function. So, Riemann zeta function is given by the Hilde suite with a coefficient is just one. And literally, uh, by the prime factorization, it has uh, this form of Euler product. And Riemann zeta function has analytic continuation to complex plane, but it has pole at s equals one. And to see it, it's uh, complete, uh, complete uh, Riemann zeta function, then to see s is to see 1 minus s. So in this case, uh, root <coughs> number is just 1. A second example is uh, Dirichlet L function. So first, we need to define Dirichlet character. So Dirichlet character is the homomorphism from uh, reduced residue class modulo n <coughs> to non zero complex numbers. Then you can extend this Dirichlet character to the set of all integers. Then, oh, sorry. So with this uh, character, you can uh, define Dirichlet series, and it has uh, all the product. And this time, this has analytic continuation to whole complex plane uh, without whole, and also indexed by some uh, functional equation. Mm. Uh, third example is L function attached to modular form. So modular form of weight K for full modular group is some holomorphic function on upper half of plane. And it satisfies very rigid transformation rule. And uh, we also assume that our, L form, uh, our modular form vanishes at infinity. Then it has a free expansion. <coughs> now then using this 
free coefficient, we can define a Dirichlet series. Not every modular function has Euler product. Uh, to have Euler product, we need to assume that f is happy eigenform. This means uh, this is the eigenfunction of a family of some operator, so-called uh, <coughs> happy operator. So in this case, if f is eigenform, then it has all the product, and uh, it, then L function has analytic continuation, also it has a functional case. But when you look at this functional case, and this is not in a, a standard form, so you need to translate your L function to the left side a little bit, and uh, you need to apply this duplication lemma uh, to your uh, this gamma function, then you, you can get standard for more functional case. So last example is Atin L function. So I think to define Atin L function, we need we we need to start with a Galois extension. So let E over Q is Galois extension with Galois group G and rho is the dimensional representation of G. So here representation is just homomorphism from G to GLDC. Uh, and uh, algebraic integer is a uh, zero of monic irreducible polynomial in uh, G coefficient. And remove integer OE is the set of all algebraic integer in the number field E. Then, uh, now, for given prime number P, we want to look at this prime number as a principal ideal in the, this remove integer. Then it has a prime factorization. By, a, by prime ideal. And there, is, uh, there are two cases. One is, it is the product of distinct <laughs> prime ideals. So uh, in this case, we say that P is unlimited. What? Uh, this may be power of product of distinct prime ideals. So we, uh, in this case, we say that P is unlimited. So, so, Parla group G commute all the prime ideals above uh, uh, prime p. So let's fix some prime ideal above p. And we can define decomposition group and inertia group. So decomposition group is uh, the group of automorphism which fixes this prime ideal p. And inertia group is subgroup of decomposition which fixes or residue modulo, modulo p. Then the quotient group become a cyclic group. And let's that, say that this sigma p is uh, some any generator for uh, this uh, cyclic group. And we call this the Frobenius automorphism. <coughs> so now we, now we can uh, ready to define local function. So CD uh, IP is subspace of CD fixed by inertia group. And actually this in inertia group is always almost always trivial. So this piece of subspace actually is CD itself. And uh, this is uh, the problem use automorphism. So local function is given by uh, this one over uh, uh, characteristic polynomial. Characteristic polynomial of this the problem use automorphism. And the global L function is just the product of uh, these local uh, uh, factors. But this time, unfortunately, we don't know that, we, we, we don't have analytic continuation of these Atin L functions. This might have hole in the critical strip uh, between 0 and 1. But we believe Atin L function is entire, so we call this Atin conjecture. And for several, for some special case, uh, you can show uh, your Atkin L function is entire and uh, will soon, uh, such example <coughs> soon. Okay. So and I think this is a pretty good list of L functions. Uh, the second topic is Montgomery pair, cor Montgomery pair correlation. I do believe that in 20th century, 
one of the most dis, uh, striking discovery in number theory is Montgomery's pair correlation. So Montgomery, he, he wants to study the correlation of zeros, a uh, correlation of pairs of zeros. So he, uh, when, when he, if we assume Riemann hypothesis, you can uh, write your zeros, uh, one of two plus i gamma. Then you can arrange your, uh, this zero yeah, by comparing in the real number system. Then it is known that the number of zeros whose height is up to t is uh, asymptotically uh, t log t over 2 pi. Then what is the mean space of zeros? Mean space of zeros is 2 pi over log t, right? So mean space becomes zero when t goes to infinity. So uh, this naive zero is not appropriate to study uh, the pair correlation of zeros. So uh, we need to normalize uh, our zero. So this is gamma heavy, gamma log gamma over 2 pi. Uh, through this normalization, the mean space becomes 1. So to define, uh, to define the pair correlation, we, uh, we need uh, some test function which uh, free test form is supported in this small uh, open interval. And Montgomery keep, uh, found that this pure correlation has integral uh, representation. <coughs> but he didn't know the meaning of his discovery <coughs> until he met the Freeman Dyson. He's a, he was very famous, the physicist. So this is a, a picture of Montgomery and Dyson. And Montgomery discussed his results with Dyson. And Dyson was very surprised. Because this, uh, this pair correlation is very familiar, very familiar to him. Uh, he didn't uh, play with zero of Riemann zeta function. He played with eigenvalues of unitime matrix. So, so UN is uh, the compact group of M by N unitary matrices, and DA is half measure, and for no, unitary matrix A, uh, EI theta 1, EI theta 2, and EI theta N is eigenvalues of A. And we can order this argument of eigenvalues, and uh, we define a pair correlation in this way. So we, for given closed interval A to B, R to A is you need to count the number of pairs of zero, uh, number of pairs of eigenvalues whose difference belong, uh, belong to this specific interval. And you divide uh, the number of pairs by N. Then uh, you integrate your R to A again uh, over all the unit matrix it and send is n to infinity. Then this infinity it exists. Uh, we call this R2 AB, and this is uh, uh, its integral representation. So this is uh, exactly the same uh, pair correlation of zero of uh, Riemann zeta function. So this means the pair correlation of zero is uh, pair correlation of zero is exactly the same with the pair correlation of eigenvalues of unitary matrix. So this, uh, this was really a uh, very shocking result. And Odorisco, he, he literally he computed the uh, millions of, uh, billions of zeros of uh, zeta function, and he studied the statistics of these zeros. And he compared uh, he, uh, uh, statistics of zeros with the statistics of eigenvalues of unitary matrices, and they really agree. But it begs a question so what, right? So what? So it's uh, interesting, but so, so what, right? So this result has been forgotten for many years. 
So for example, when God made pure correlation, this was uh, from 1974, right? And in 1990, Sana, uh, Rudinik, and Koch, uh, they began to study this phenomenon more systematically. So, so instead of Riemann uh, zeta function, you consider just L function, okay? For example, Dirichlet L function or modular F or something like that. And with this L function, you can similarly you can compute pair correlation, right? But here, right hand side, one you have. What do you have? We have the same right hand side, right? I mean. It is not reasonable, right? You have a different L function, but you have the same right hand side, right? So, Katz and Sana, they considered uh, these five weighted group, unitary group, SO even, SO odd, orthogonal group, and the symplectic group. Mm. We, oh, sorry. With this five group, you can exactly you can do the same thing, R two A. Then you have the same R two G, regardless of your group. So for this five kinds of group, you have the same pair correlation. Now this is make sense. Now this is now make sense because so uh, this five kinds of matrix group is not out of nowhere. So when you have a family of L functions of a function field, you can associate one of these five groups to your family. So, so the, uh, Katz and Sana, uh, they want to say that uh, for this L function, maybe this, may, uh, this group working behind the scene, and uh, for another <laughs> L function, maybe <coughs> Right, this group working behind the scene. So they want to <coughs> find, they want to determine for which L function what what matrix group is match for that L function. So they can so with pair correlation you cannot do that, right? You have the same right hand side. So they consider a different approach. So instead of single L function, now we consider a family of L function. So instead of whole zeros, we just consider zeros near s equals one of two. And this is their conjecture. So distribution of Lorentz zeros of L function in a family F is predicted by the symmetric type GF attached to your family. So here, <coughs> the symmetric type is the five the matrix group uh, I just mentioned. So let me describe the conjecture uh, more precisely. So F is family of L function. So for example, you consider family of L function attached to a quadratic character. Or you may second, at the second example, you may consider family of L function attached to a um, modular form. And <coughs> uh, for L function in F, CF is uh, analytic conductor. So analytic conductor is basically this N is uh, ordinary conductor times this uh, product of these local parameters. This local parameter appears in the incomplete L function. And F sub X is the subset of F for which this analytic conductor is uh, bounded by just up to X. Now we denote the non-trivial zeros by uh, hat plus i gamma. Here uh, we don't assume the Riemann hypothesis, so this gamma, this time this gamma can be uh, complex numbers. So, but still you can arrange all uh, zeros by comparing <coughs> the real part of uh, of gamma. Now with this family, uh, we can define n level density. So to define n-level density, we need uh, n even uh, 
and he was going to function. And uh, we need this um, uh, free transform is sub, uh, compactly supporting. So let's start with a uh, one level density function. So for given uh, L function, you can uh, estimate, you can compute this uh, inner sum. So gamma is the uh, zero of your L function. And this is the log CF over two pi is the normalizing constant. So we need this again to make means phase one, we need this normalized constant. Then you can sum over this inner sum over your family, and we divide the side of family. Now, uh, now next is the two-level density. So to define two-level density, you, we need two test functions. And the pairs of zeros, but here, uh, when, when you choose uh, pairs of zeros, there's some restriction. Gamma J1 is not equal to plus or minus gamma J2. Uh, if gamma J1 is equal to plus or minus gamma J2, uh, then because the test function is even function, these pairs go down to one level density. So we want to remove uh, uh, such pairs. And similarly, with n test function, you can uh, define n level density. Okay, so now, finally, we, we are ready to state the conjecture, and level density conjecture. <coughs> mm. <coughs> so limit of n level density function exists, and it has integral representation, and the, especially this corner function is a uh, family asymmetric type density. For the pure correlation, we cannot detect the symmetric type, but with this n level density, uh, we can detect symmetric type. So this is a corner uh, function. This is basically determinant of n by n matrix whose entry is uh, in this form. For example, let's look at uh, one level density conjecture for simple active type. So this is a corner function for simple active type. Then if we assume, uh, if uh, when you assume a free transform is supported in this closed interval by a uh, Planchard theorem, your right hand side is pi hat zero by minus hat phi zero. So if you want to uh, prove uh, and then, uh, one level density conjecture, uh, you need to do your left hand side is equal to this one. Yeah. But unfortunately, we don't have any single example uh, uh, for which this n level density conjecture was proved because here, the conjecture says the only restriction is the pi hat is compactly supporting. Just, the, yeah, the size of support doesn't matter. Just if compactly supported, this should be true. But we couldn't, um, pr uh, people cannot prove for any uh, arbitrary support, but uh, several, uh, they could, uh, several people prove for small support, very small support. For example, when in the case of quadratic character, Rubinstein, he computed any n level density, and uh, he showed that n level density agrees with the uh, symplectic type. And uh, Ivanich, Lu, and Sala, they consider this family of uh, new forms. <coughs> In this case, they just only computed one level density. They couldn't compute higher density, but they showed that <coughs> oh, one level density agree with the orthogonal type. But when you consider subfamily with this root number one, the so root number is the constant appearing functional equation, then it agree with, and so even uh, subfamily with root number negative one agree with uh, SOR. And Yang, 
he also, he considers this time, this is a atinet function. He considers some special family of atinet function and he computed uh, one level density with small support. And he checked that this atinet function symmetric type is a simple type. So uh, Young family is uh, close, uh, closely related to my family. So I will talk about uh, this family uh, in detail soon. So first, uh, we need to uh, define SD, uh, SD plus one field. So SD plus one field is number field of degree D plus one. Okay. Each dollar closure is uh, SD plus one dollar extending. Then, uh, with this uh, SD plus one field, we can define LS of K. This is a Dedekind zeta function of K quotient by Riemann zeta function. Then this law is the standard representation of SD plus one. So it becomes degree D atinel function. And if uh, your number field is S3 or S4 field, then this atinel function is uh, entire. To define our family, uh, we need to fix some self dual representation. And uh, LX is the family of ranking self of L function, pi times rho. And here, DK is discriminant of number field. And this discriminant has some congruence condition, uh, congruent A modulo Q pi. And Q pi is conductor of pi. So, yeah, so this is a uh, uh, joint result to be a uh, king. So, we could prove, we could compute n level density for any n for our family. And we have three, we can have three different symmetric type from our family. It depends, it depends on uh, root number and delta pi. So delta pi is some invariant of pi. It is plus one or negative one. If delta pi is one, root number is one, we'll choose SO even as our symmetric type. If delta pi is one, root number is negative one, we'll choose SO odd uh, as a symmetric type. If delta pi is negative one, just symplectic type is symmetric type. So the limit of then we could compute the limit of n level density and it agree with the, the symmetric type we chose. So our result has the pros and cons. The pro is we computed n level density for any n. I think this is uh, the first example uh, to compute n level density for high degree L function. And the cons is support. So this pi i is support, uh, this Fourier transform is supported in this very small interval. This epsilon is yeah, really some epsilon. Yeah. So very small interval. So if someone can compute uh, this n level density conjecture with larger support, it could be very uh, great result. Okay, so Instead of giving you the, the proof in detail, I want to just uh, explain two main, main ideas for the proof. The first ingredient is explicit formula. So right, L function has right, derivative three, and you consider logarithmic derivative. Then this logarithmic derivative has this coefficient, then you consider this sum over zero, so this gamma is zero of L function. Then you can translate this sum over zero as sum over prime powers. 
And actually, this sum is what? Appearing in one level density, right? This inner sum is by this one. So you can, so if you apply uh, explicit formula, now from now on, you just forget it, the uh, zeros, and just use uh, this compute sum over this prime power. So this is the one uh, uh, ingredient, and second one is, so we are counting number field. <clears throat> so we want to count number field. We want to count number field whose discriminant is up to x. And we are a little bit ambitious, a little bit ambitious, so we want to count number field discriminant is congruent a modulo d. And uh, this is not enough. We want to impose some lo uh, local condition. So S is the finite set of local condition at specific prime P1, P2, and Pn. So you can choose any prime, set of prime uh, that you like. So here, local condition LCP is SPC means your prime P is unnamified and the conjugate class of Provenius automorphism is C. So C is, this is a conjugate C uh, class of SP plus 1. So actually counting number field is equivalent to counting L function. When, because for, uh, for each number field in A, uh, this number field corresponding to this Rankine's L of L function. So uh, in our setting, counting number field is actually counting L functions. Also, there are some, your prime can be ramified, and there are several uh, splitting types, so R1, R10, R omega be the splitting type of uh, ramified prime. So LCP is SPIJ means your prime P is ramified, and uh, splitting type is IJ. So, so uh, LXS is the well, set of, of number field, this extra condition, local condition is satisfied, and LX, DAS, this also you can similarly define. Now, we need to uh, define local density one. Local density for local condition. <laughs> so density for this local condition is the size of conjugate class over size of your group times one plus fp. So here fp is very small function at most one of p. And to define sp density for spij, we need some positive function c1, c2, and c omega, whose sum is exactly equal to fp. And this uh, density for this condition is CIP over 1 plus FP. And density for local condition, uh, density for this condition is the product of uh, local uh, densities. Now this <coughs> is our conjecture. We want to count number field, not only main term, we very good error terms. And so we want to impose this uh, condition S, then size of this set is essentially density of S times this size of LX. And this error term is depend on your set S. So if the size of your set S is bigger and bigger, error term becomes worse and worse. And also you want to count the number field. Uh, for this discriminant to satisfy certain isometric condition, a progression condition, and also you want to uh, impose this local condition. Then basically the size of uh, this yeah. set is density times the size of this one. Yeah. So this conjecture is true for S3 field. So Tanim and Son, they could count number field. Uh, we not only good error term, main term, and they, they found secondary term. 
yeah, secondary term for counting number b. And this is a local density for local conditions. So let me describe this uh, table a little bit. So you have a prime p, right? So your prime p has a decomposition in number field k. And there is a, a three case for unlimited prime. One is product of three prime idea. We say that this is a totally split. And second case is product of two, two prime ideas. We say the partial is P, P is partial is P. And also, this P just remain as a single prime P. We say well, this P is enough. Okay, so in this case, if your prime p is total speed, the provenance <laughs> element p belongs to trivial conjugate class. If your prime is partial speed, the provenance element of p belongs to conjugate class of 1, 2. And if your prime is inert, Provenance element of P belong to this uh, conjugate class. So, size of my trivial class is just one, and the size of this conjugate class one two is three, and size of this conjugate class one one two three is two, right? And for ready, so prime P can be ramified. First, it could be totally ramified. And just that part of the case is partially ramified. And oh, we we define in this case C one P is one over P square, and for partial split case C two P is one over P. So right, I F P is C one P plus C two P. Right. So for cubic a uh, cubic field case. Uh, at p is 1 over p plus uh, 1 over p square. And so here, right, and what? Size of S3 is S3, what? 6, right? So now uh, this number makes sense. If p is totally split, the 1 is the size of trivial conjugate class, and this 6 is what? The size of the symmetric group, right? And uh, this is 1 plus fp. Then you can similarly you can understand uh, the other uh, local densities. And, and S4 and S5 field, uh, this conjecture is partially true. If we don't uh, uh, impose this congruous condition, on this criminal, you can still count number field with local conditions. And this is some byproduct of counting number field. And for example, recently, Shanghai and Zimmerman, they computed S5 field uh, with good error terms. Just then, we just use his result, then you can, you can count the number field with local conditions. Now, I, I would like to persuade you 
why this counting conjecture is useful, why this is so powerful. So just let uh, so we just we consider a field field. Your set local condition your set S consists of just three conditions. And this means prime two a partial is field in number field K and we wish prime three uh, total speed sorry total speed prime two total speed prime three partial speed and prime five enough. Okay, so we so we impose this local condition on number field, and you can count uh, this number field by Taniguchi and so on. Taniguchi and so on. So you uh, explicitly right, you can compute the density for your local condition. And each L function, uh, each number field for each number field k belongs to this set, it corresponding to degree two attain L function. And this coefficient a2 is always 2, a3 is 0, a5 is negative 1. So uh, this is very nice, right? You, you, you can collect some family of L function with pre described coefficient. Just, uh, yeah, you can yeah, control. Uh, yeah. Uh, so you can choose any prime, and you can specify the values at that prime as you wish. And uh, this is uh, second example. Uh, to compute one level density, we need, we need to compute this average value of AP. Average value of AP. So, so first let's consider prime P is a uh, lemming five. So there are not so many, there are very small portion of number field. This prime P is lemmified, and their contribution is M just one of P. So when P goes to infinity, uh, this just vanish, this contribution vanish. And now let's look at the case when prime P is uh, unlemmified. One of six of them, prime P is partial, I pull out its split. Uh, Total speed, then AP is just two, and half of them, uh, uh, prime P is partially split, so AK becomes zero. Uh, one third of them, the number field, uh, the prime P is enough. Then in this case, uh, AP is negative one. So by simple arithmetic, just plus minus, right? Two times one of six mm -hmm. plus zero minus one of Three is zero, so there is no contribution from uh, lemmified, unlemmified prime. So average value of this AP is just of at most one of P. So you in, so this is for only for one level density. So if you, if you want to compute two level density or three level density and level density, you need to deal with more complicated sum. But anyway, by counting conjecture, you, you, are, you can manage to uh, estimate uh, your sum. Then it implies the n level density result. Oh. Yeah, thank you for your attention. Any questions? So do you have any plans about uh, future research in this direction? Or uh, yes. Mm -hmm. For example, <coughs> so yeah, there are five symmetric type, right? So I mean, so I mean, five symmetric type gives us limit of this n level density. So I mean, there are many, many, many number of L function, family of L functions, right? Five symmetric type is not enough, right, to get more precise prediction, right? 
I mean, but there are lots of many families of air pollution. Oh, basic five basic group does not enough. So people believe that this symmetric type gives us main term. <coughs> main term. Oh, when you take limit, you can get main term. The secondary term. Uh, so using some ratio conjecture, you can, you may, if you are lucky, you can compute, you can get secondary term. So, so, so you may first, with ratio conjecture, you predict secondary term. You predict secondary term, and after that, uh, you un unconditionally, you get the secondary term. Then, uh, it supports some ratio conjecture. So ratio conjecture uh, propose uh, suggest us uh, secondary term. So we uh, then can you can you uh, get the secondary term suggested by ratio conjecture? So yeah. So that's uh, maybe uh, another direction. This uh, paracore lake I'm trying to think what sort of thing it does. So the, when I think about eigen, uh, eigenvalues of matrices, I'm thinking about something that's practically Diophantine. Mm -hmm. Can you use that to make something about the zeros of L functions, Diophantine? Diophantine, can you do it? Yeah, so, so there, there are Diophantine equations corresponding to like something being an eigenvalue, something having eigenvalues of certain properties. And it would be really neat if you could have something that could be defined in a Diophantine way that would mean certain L functions will have zeros that have some properties. Uh, will this, will this, pair, or this pair correlation thing, will that get such a thing as that? Uh, yeah, frankly speaking, uh, I'm not familiar with the Diophantine equation, so maybe uh, so we need some further discussion to find some yeah, connection. Yeah. And what, what kind of results you are using to count <coughs> in those fields? So you, you, you talk about counting certain fields. So, so what, what do you use as basis for that? Uh, so, so S3 field using Sintanic data function, the what uh, Taniguchi and Stone, they computed. Mm -hmm. And actually, for example, uh, the, the Zimmerman and Shankar, they computed S5 field, counted S5 field. But actually, This one, for example, this result. Uh, this is, I don't want to say I proved this. Because when you read their paper, this just comes out, but they didn't pay attention to this direction. Mm -hmm. So I need this result, so just I read their paper with this interest. Mm -hmm. so, so they, I, I can say that they know this, but they didn't write down, yeah, so. Just a byproduct. What if you can count number field with power saving error term? Uh, this is a, I, I think just yeah byproduct. Yeah. Just well, people didn't pay attention this kind of thing. But yeah, mm -hmm. I realized that this is uh, uh, necessary to compute a never density function. I uh, never density conjecture. Any other questions? Maybe like a curiosity question. You mentioned modular form, forms for SL2Z. Yes. Are there other modular forms for other groups? Oh, yes, right, right. Sub subgroups? Yes, sub right. Some, for So you consider subset of SL2Z 
and this is your A B such that such that A B C D E congruent modulo n. So this star means it can be any number. Yeah. So for for this group you can you can define the modular point. Any other questions? All right, let's thank our students.